That's a very good question because, uh, of course, uh, the the growth has been, been um, so spectac spectacular in a way for all these years and even before that. I mean, from the 1980s there was uh, a continuous growth in Greece. That in a way fooled everybody. Although the underlying problems and uh, the structural problems of Greece were always known. Now, in your question, to your question, there are those who would say that the problem goes back to the inception of the Greek state, uh, when the modern Greek state, after its independence from the Ottoman Empire, started taking shape, its uh, special relationship with Greek society, the clientelistic kind of aspect, a certain political culture that developed. So you could take it back to uh, the beginning of the formation of the Greek state, and as a matter of fact, this is not the first time that the country goes bankrupt economically. There have been uh, past historical instances uh, of the same uh, kind of situation. Of course, what we are seeing now is unprecedented because it is certainly the worst crisis since the end of the Second World War and the Civil War in Greece. And that's why some people um, would place you know, the beginning of, the, of this crisis not back into the 19th century, but on the way that the post-dictatorial state, like the post-1974 uh, um, political um, kind of arrangement in Greece, took shape. And uh, the two-party system, the way the two-party system um, uh, was, was formed, it developed, it's, um, uh, you know, in a, in a way of a kind of a state capitalist economy, um, and creating this kind of state mo monster that we have today, and uh, it's very difficult to reform. At the same time, while Greece was modernizing in a way, and it became a member state of the European communities, it failed to, uh, to do the necessary reforms, to convert with Europe, and uh, that is maybe taken um, uh, as a series of missed opportunities for, for Greece to reform, which you're seeing today because of the necessity for reform. And others put the beginning of the crisis much closer in 2001 when Greece was um, uh, accepted to become a member of the Eurozone on problematic or false statistics or whatever you want to call it, that Greece shouldn't have entered the Eurozone and that of course created a big problem because of the country entering into Europe having cheap credit and all you know the rest that we that we've heard, so the, there are various approaches as to where you see the beginning of a crisis, um, depending on whether you are a historian of the long durée, or whether you see it as a you know more of a political scientist and the way the kind of state was um, formed and and understood after 1974, because after all we are seeing the exhaustion of the of the current political system right now. Yes, of course, you know, judging from the outcome, you have to call it a mistake. Um, the big problem is that uh, the situation was not well monitored. And of course, if there is a, if that, this is also a little bit of a European problem as well, as not only part of Greek exceptionalism, as it is often presented, you just have to see the way that this um, infamous convergence in, uh, of Europe is working, how the south goes with the, with the north, and of course, you know, we may see um, um, another problem coming from the Eastern Europe that has uh, uh, come into the European Union more recently. So, yes, uh, there were problematic statistics, but of course, all countries at the time had to, uh, had to kind of, sh you know, shape their statistics in order to uh, get into the European Union. Now, let me just put it as it is. If we consider this to be Greek exceptionalism, then yes, it was a big mistake that they let you know Greece uh, get into the European, uh, the, Euro the eurozone, and they didn't monitor the country properly. If you think that this is a European crisis, and that's a deeper, more fundamental problem with the way the whole of European um, Union works, and discrepancies between the richer areas of the EU and the poorer areas of the EU, then you have to see the you know the issue a bit more differently. Well, it, it is a problem with the global financial crisis because all the countries were, you know, have been affected in one way or another. And of course, because this is a big banking crisis, 
and not just um, a sovereign debt crisis. It's, it's deeply connected with um, how banks operate. There's also the other perspective of those who have a more kind of Marxist, anti-capitalist perspective that, of course, you know, will, will criticize the, you know, the way the, the, the global uh, um, environment, um, the global economic environment, the global political economy works at the expense of countries that are the weaker links, in a way, of the, of the, of the capitalist world. Um, so, in a way, you know, of course there is a problem with the way the whole system works, and we are seeing that this is actually a crisis of, uh, of the developed West. Uh, and it's not so much the crisis of the, you know, of, of, of other countries because we're seeing that countries like China or, or India or Turkey closer to Europe or Brazil, um, you know, they are developing quite spectacularly. Oh, they are really, really great. They're really spectacular. I mean, let's start with the with a social crisis, which are already very, very visible because you've got um, bigger employment. Let's not forget for, for the last three years, almost there's been you know one austerity package after the other. So that has been affecting the incomes of people. It's been reduced to 20, 30 in, percent in, in some cases. There is a massive rise in unemployment, and we are seeing now, I think, percentages of 18 percent which is even more acute in the case of young people. Um, I think it reaches almost 40% of young people who are unemployed. So, the, I mean, we are almost talking of a, of a lost generation here, either because those who are more able will travel abroad and they will leave the country, and uh, so there's going to be this kind of human capital, um, human hemorrhage, right, going abroad, or because we're seeing people um, staying in Greece, unemployed people, that, um, you know, their best years, actually, they won't, uh, they won't be working. So that's one fundamental problem. There is also a lot of um, <coughs> poverty rising. Um, and um, the recent statistics from the European Commission as well, they do note that um, in the Greek case, you've got a rising property and people living close to the pro 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 poverty uh, border line, as it were, or below it. So that is another thing. You are even seeing um, social repercussions in the health sector because there's not enough money going to the health sector uh, from the public finances. You are seeing it also in the streets of big cities. And um, there's also another problem that Greece, we should not forget, it's also an entry point for the European Union for many migrants coming from abroad. And although these may, most of them may be transit migrants and they want to leave Greece as soon as possible, they are there for a certain time. That creates, that creates another social problem, which in a period of crisis, it's even more acute. So the social repercussions are very big and that they are there to stay for long. The political repercussions are also particularly enormous because what we are seeing is the exhaustion of the political system as we know it. The 1974 two-party system that was created between PASOK and the democracy that we don't have to think in terms of that anymore. Um, the most rec recent opinion polls that I've been watching show that PASOK, which is the government, has dropped to a single digit number. Now, this is really amazing because, you know, the, the biggest part in Greece to drop to 8 or 9 percent, and of course, elections are coming most probably, you know, this May, April or May. Um, this is particularly significant. So one pillar of the two-party system is completely collapsing. There is a big um, also transfer of voters from PASOK to the left. So you've got a left which is composed by three parties at the moment, uh, reaching almost a 40% of the national vote in the opinion polls that we've got so far. As for new democracy, which is the other big pillar of the, this two-party system as we used to know it, it is keeping a 30% of its core voters in a way. And another interesting phenomenon is that you also have the rise of um, an extreme uh, right-wing party. Now that is something that you don't have in Greece. I mean, of course you have a nationalist right, but you don't have an extreme right-wing party. And even that you see in Greece because of the issue of um, uh, illegal immigrants that I've been talking to you about. So while all that is a lethal combination, nobody you know, knows 
how the political system is going to evolve. We may guess that when the elections come, no party will be able to have an absolute majority. New Democracy will probably be the biggest party, but it will have to create a coalition with other parties. Now, how this affects the need for reform and change for Greece and its communication with the external debtors and the big countries abroad, that's another matter. Okay, uh, before we say what should be done, let's answer the question, why has it been worse, as you have pointed out? There are two reasons for this, and I believe it's a combination. The first reason is that the reform process that was required by Greece hasn't been going um, as expected, and that, um, uh, where, uh, that the, the Greek political managers have been doing rather badly. That can be said, and this is the, 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 the preferred uh, kind of option of those who, you know, who uh, give the money for, for, from abroad. They always say that you know, the, the reform pro process has been very, very slow. Um, I say to this that there have been, you know, during the past two or three years, some reforms in the labor um, uh, uh, sector, in the pension um, uh, sector, also in opening closed professions. There have been problems with implementation, of course, but there have been some reforms taking place. Having said that, there hasn't been any privatization. So, I mean, you know, you, you do see there that the, really the, the, the political class of PASOK especially has been very, very hesitant. So that's one thing. The reform has been quite problematic in a way. The second explanation is that the recipe was also problematic because, you know, thinking about austerity and implementing austerity, which has been the main kind of... Uh, um, the main motto uh, of the last two years, that has really uh, brought even deeper recession in Greece, less taxes, and so on and so forth. And that, I mean, you know, the recession that we're seeing is really unprecedented. I think it's in a total of 18% uh, since 2008-9. So there is a problem also with the recipe that um, is being uh, recommended for Greece. I say it's a combination of the two. Now, what needs to be done? Growth, which has been completely missing from the from the language of um, of the Greek crisis. I mean, that's what you need at the moment. You need to to kind of think of what the recovery will be like. What kind of sectors can can grow? But the problem is that in a context of so such a deep recession and um, uh, so much skepticism towards you know the Greek political elites, the Greek business environment, it's very easy to bring investment from from abroad. So that is something which is really missing. I mean, the growth um, uh, is definitely what um, should be um, uh, an option to try to get uh, Greece out of the crisis. And the second is definitely there has to be the reform process, but which will have to be implemented. Uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that the country, for instance, um, is becoming cheaper uh, forcefully, hopefully that will help. But of course, the social ramifications of this are also there. I mean, overall, uh, the country is on a very, very fine balance. Anything can upset the balance, and uh, you know, anything can go really wrong. The issue of sovereignty is something which is very important here because it is absolutely clear now that the country has lost its sovereignty. If you know, if you don't have options to be able to, you know, to choose for your own people, then you don't have sovereignty. Now, when that sovereignty was lost is another matter. I mean, of course, it became visible that it was lost after 2009 when the country needed to be bailed out and when there were um, external injections in order to keep the economy going. But of course. The sovereignty was not lost in 2009, it was lost long before that, when the, exter when the debt of the country was becoming massive, and also when the national deficit was increasing to such a rapid pace. So it was a combination of things and a historical you know, process behind this that led to this kind of um, loss of national sovereignty. Um, on the other hand, when we talk about international politics, it was... I believe, you know, kind of a mistake for the Germans, of course, to say that they have, you know, a commissioner for Greece 
Although the way I understand it now, I, I, I don't think that the, you know they regret for having said it. Although it, there was a massive reaction, not just coming from Greece, but coming from from other sides. But the way that I see it is that uh, they are, they will be monitoring the situation very, very closely. Whether it's going to be a commissioner, which I don't believe it's going to be, or whether they are going to create a special bank account for money to go in order to repay debts. Again, I don't know if this is going to be um, the, 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 the option that is going to be acceptable, but some kind of a monitoring, severely monitoring situation coming from abroad, this is definitely going to happen. It's already happening. I mean, it's just uh, happening. Um, and um, I mean, you don't have an institution, um, an institutional person, like for instance, a high representative that you have in Bosnia, uh, to you know, to have a direct external administration, but what you're having basically now is um, um, Greece being forced to, to take choices that uh, it's not her own. Um, what I consider here, and why do I explain? How do I explain this kind of uh, rhetoric again, coming back? Um, there was a moment, be you know, when Italy was also appearing to be rather problematic be before Mario Monti. <coughs> Uh, was called to form the government, that it appeared that this was going to be a European problem, that it was not just a Greek problem, that Italy was part of it, that Portugal also was, you know, could be part of it, and that in general the periphery was not controllable. Now, I think the rhetoric, and also because there is all this um, talk about debt restructuring at the moment, and uh, the, P the PSI, and also the, the new bailout package, uh, the pressure that they're putting on Greece, the um, uh, the, the the powerful of Europe are trying to present this as being again a Greek exception, like a Greek problem. This is what we see right now in the news. And uh, even uh, today I've been reading in the newspapers that Mario Monti said that we are doing much better, that we are not um, you know, worried that we may become Greece again. So again the rhetoric, after a certain time of you know, being a European problem, it's going back again to becoming a Greek problem. I don't know how much this is you know, the actual truth or how much this is the rhetoric. Because you really cannot have, you know, a situation being a European problem between July and January of 2012, and then between January of 2012 and February or March 2012, that's becoming a great problem again. I think a lot of it is, is, is currently rhetoric, and in that context is where I see that they're talking about the commissioner <coughs> for, uh, you know, for the Greek budget or this kind of, and also they are trying to teach other countries that may want to pursue this kind of path of um, having this massive haircut of their debt, that this is not a very easy process. You, you will go through a big national humiliation first before you are accepted to do this kind of thing.